This episode's FDR shoutout goes to Nathan Park. Leave a comment down below to have a chance for a shoutout in the next episode. Make sure you're subscribed. Whoa, welcome back to another fish tank review. Fish tank review. Thank you for stopping by this video. Really glad you guys are here. Before we get into it, let me just sponsor myself once again. Chris for thought youtube channel get into it if you ever want to see this guy do some mukbangs do some food reviews snack reviews some other random stuff bro christopher thought got you covered he's got an amazing channel he's pretty darn handsome i would check him out if i were you what is this horrific what is this horrific video i'm watching right now What does that prove, yo? Who's trying to poop out a whole fish? That fish was alive, was that really necessary? Man, some people have the weirdest fetishes. It's just so sad to think of like, that fish, okay? The whole evolutionary tree that fish has, the whole lineage of that fish, the adaptations of its ancestors, everything, all the ancient history of that fish. It all came down to getting flushed down this demo toilet. Thinking about that just blows my mind. Two goldfish to spend quarantine with. Bro, you're not you're not gonna be spending quarantine with them for much longer. Did you put some rose petals in there? I <laughs> a better caption for this is switching out two goldfish every week to spend quarantine with. I wonder why they died. What if the goldfish don't wanna spend quarantine with you? Ever think of that? Maybe maybe they don't like bad fish owners. This tank is sent in by Christian Hudley. Beautiful pearlweed carpet on sand. Never tried that yet, but very curious. It seems like it works beautifully fine. An assortment of plants in the back. Got Oko stones doing the TP, the old TP maneuver. What is that? Half moon bed of fish. I love the little minute colors. Looking really healthy. You got a school of neon tetras. Now this might be, I don't know, is it a 10 gallon or a 5 gallon? Whatever it is, I don't recommend this setup, but just because it works with one bed of fish doesn't mean it works with all bed of fish. I would just say steer clear of this scenario where you have an enclosed, rather enclosed space and a species that really likes to school with a lot of the same individuals in that species. Honestly, I recommend at least a 15 to 20 gallon for a species like a neon tetra. They are by no means a good species to keep in something like a 10 gallon. Having said that, the scape is quite enjoyable. 4.35 out of 5. Keep it up. Yes, those are two male bettas together. And yes, that is a goldfish in the background. All in the same tank. Poster said, I have unblocked the nature, whatever that means, by testing out what people said you could not. I have unblocked the nature. There's got to be a better way to say whatever he's trying to say. <laughs> well, here we go. Nature unblocked. I think he meant to say I have blocked nature because there's no nature in here. One of the comments says something like, well, I'm glad these two betta fish worked it out, maybe a pecking order, but not every pair of betta fish uh, is going to sort it out like this. And they're not necessarily going to, it's not a guaranteed lasting pecking order either. And to add on to that, the temperature requirements for goldfish and betta fish are not very similar. Betta fish like a crisp 25 degrees Celsius Goldfish like it a little bit colder than that. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. This tank is sent in by... I'm not even gonna attempt that name because there I can't sound that out. But your scape is superb. Look at that red, healthy school of Ember Tetras. Look at that Iwagumi-esque scape. I know there's some carpeting action that still needs to be done on the bottom, but the plants that are embedded throughout the hardscape... Oh, the Panatophyta corner. That is amazing. I've got to give this a 5 out of 5. Keep it up. The fastest things on earth. Cheetah. Okay, okay. Pretty fast. Probably the fastest land animal. Only outdone by the peregrine falcon, but peregrine falcons are flying, so. Airplane. Okay. Also pretty fast. Speed of light. Alright, yeah. But it's only 75% of the way. What, what is so much faster than the speed of light? Me doing a water change when my tank has an ammonia spike. Oh, yes, of course. How did I how did I forget that? That should have been obvious to me. I'm sorry. Caught me slipping here. You know what this means, though? This just made me realize. Fish keepers are the key to time travel because doing the water change when there's an ammonia spike is faster than the speed of light. That means you can actually technically go backwards in time. I always thought there was something special about fish keepers. This is the hobby that keeps on giving. This tank is sent in by Shoyua Gaming Stuff. Nice little nano tank. I think he said it was four gallons. It's a tad bit on the small side for betta fish, but you know what? This is done pretty darn well. It's got live plants. It's got good filtration, nutrient-rich substrate. The betta looks healthy as anything. And actually, I just want to say that that wood piece covered in java fern 
That is next level, dude. Your Ludwigia looks quite trimmed, maintained, and neat. Very nice. 4.5 out of 5, keep it up. Filter media companies after inventing carbon filter cartridges. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just making millions of dollars. You got all these people getting scammed, trying to go to your local PetSmart Petco looking for the exact filter cartridge to fit the exact filter. I've gone through this. I've explained this quite a few times. Um, I even made a video about it. I think it was like the, t the number one scam in the hobby or something, something clickbait like that. Except it wasn't clickbait because they they are kind of scammy. You don't need the exact filter cartridges. By the way, if this is news to you, <laughs> I'm glad because I'm glad you're hearing this because then you might be saving a lot of money. Yeah, you don't even need exact cartridges that came with your filter. Like, what is that? Most of the time, there's way better things you can be putting in your filter. And you don't even need to switch them out that often. I can count on my one hand how many times I've switched out filter cartridges in all of my tanks combined. That's probably not true, but some... So that's why I'm always surprised, especially when I was working at PetSmart, how there's like repeat customers coming in in the same month getting that exact filter cartridge and getting mad at us for not having it in stock. I'm like, dude, chill. I'm trying to save you some dollars. Just hear me out. Sponge. Just get a sponge. Get some porous filter biomedia. It's gonna go a very long way. Nope. Customers, they're stubborn. Two male bettas in a cup. What's what's with the two male bettas trend in this episode? In a store. What? may be worse than that. In a store? I'm assuming you mean a local fish store. Uh-oh. Maybe they thought it was boring in their store and they wanted some entertainment? The black one is clearly the superior fish here. The beige one looks like it's been ripped up quite, quite well. I mean, what an awful thing to do. I'm glad you're taking a picture. You should probably also include the name of the local fish store so people stop shopping there. It might sound cruel, especially during like COVID days, like you're supposed to support your local businesses, but I think I think if people outed them, they would learn a lesson not to do this. And then after they learn their lesson, let's go shop there again when they're a good local fish store. There's nothing wrong with that. Nine cichlids and a pleco in there, apparently. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed. I would have guessed uh, this is a jellyfish tank. Where are the cichlids? Oh, those white things are cichlids. Oh, wow. What are they, like albino severums or something? I'm not too sure. I'm, and besides, cichlid is a very vague term. Cichlid can mean angelfish, for goodness sake. What are cichlids doing in a saltwater jellyfish anemone species tank? <laughs> and a pleco. How did you find that information? Like, did they list that? It, I'm guessing this is on a posting on Craigslist. They're just proudly listing. I got nine cichlids in here and a pleco, baby. I am a master fish keeper. The bonus secret comment for this episode is CO2. This tank is from Jane Kim. Jane, you're doing great. Just straight off the bat, I see so many things that I like and I want that I couldn't even say anything specifically. First of all, let's just address the filter situation. Look at that multi-process filter. This person knows exactly what they're doing, exactly what their filter does. This person is not wasting their time or money going out to Petco every two days to get a replacement filter cartridge. No. And can I just say, I love your lamp aesthetic. You're not even messing with like the whole ADA, Fluvo, whatever company. You're just like, I'm going lamps. And they look great because they're like a minimalistic color and I, I love the design. This whole thing is so aesthetic. The table is on, the white wall, the low boy. That is the main thing that I'm very jealous of. I've always wanted a low boy tank like this, but none of my local fish stores carry them. And if I wanted to buy one online, I'm gonna have to pay premium dollars. That's, you know, for something that's probably gonna come in broken because half the time these glass shipments just break in transit. You got the CO2 going, that's very apparent because look at that amazing carpet. Of course, also the CO2 drop checker, but that amazing carpet, you section it off with some landscaping technique with that, with those stones, and then the wood just really complements this low boy, like a hundred percent. This is my five out of five. That, that was just a convoluted way of getting to, <laughs> this tank is five out of five. My camera, my fish, me. Yup. Whenever I'm trying to film one of my endlers, they just go like pew 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 pew. Oh, you want to film me? Well, good luck. Damn it. Q 
can you just can you just stay still for two seconds, you crackhead? From a local seller on Facebook. It's such an asshole way of marketing. So many people are gonna get the wrong idea by that bowl. These catfish get humongous. Just because they're juveniles right now, doesn't mean they're gonna stay that size. And if you're selling them, I hope, I sincerely hope there's a message down in the description. They belong in ponds, if not, I don't know, 2,000 gallons of water. And let me tell you, there is a very small percentage of people on this earth that have such a big tank. A much higher chance someone with a 10 gallon, 20 gallon, maybe even a 55 gallon thinks it's okay to put one of these bad boys in their fish tank. This tank is sent in by Cesario Dermawan. I mean, this is just amazing. You got the aesthetically pleasing substrate, the light substrate in the front, and then you section it off with some smaller pebbles and then the bigger rocks uh, to hide the nutrient-rich substrate that's housing all of the plants. And by the way, the plants are embedded it beautifully throughout those amazing lines of wood. And the wood really complements this shape, this kind of taller aquarium. This is an aquascape to behold. And it's getting my 5 out of 5. Good job, Cesario. And I see that little otosynclis sucking on the glass. So cute. Turtles, crabs, koi, green spotted puffer guppies, an axolotl, and more in one bucket. Holy cow! When COVID first hit, this guy probably thought it was the next great flood and started panicking, building an ark. I don't know. I don't want to assume too much here. I'm going to assume the best of humanity and so what, I'm gonna try to explain what happened in, with that mindset, okay? This guy's got a fantastic fish, uh, fish room, but for some reason, maybe ha uh, an airplane crashed into his house and all of his tanks were on the verge of, uh, most of them were smashed and, and the fish were all on the ground. So in the split second, he saved, he managed to save every single one of them, heroically. He had to put them in one bucket, one small bucket for the time being, and, and that's exactly what happened here. So so that's that's my uh, trust in humanity, my my glass half full. I, you can tell how, how hard I tried just now to make this story seem actually good. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Fish Tank Review. You are supporting this channel by pushing that algorithm to space, to Mars, baby. Elon Musk got nothing on us. Well, this is the end of the video, the end of the episode, until next week, but before that, Secret comment club. Today's secret comment of this video is Aquascape. Don't forget to look for the bonus secret comment embedded somewhere throughout this video. I'll see you guys next time. Please drop a like if you enjoyed and subscribe. There'll be more videos to come. Don't forget to get your hands wet.